what the uh, 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 Saints of God are doing there. They've got a home office in New Zealand. They've got a home office in Australia. They have a home office in uh, uh, Canada, and they have a home office in uh, England. And um, are working through churches uh, throughout uh, uh, the world and uh, honored to be a part of their work. Turn with us in your Bibles, if you will, uh, to, uh, I thought, boy, Travis is giving me the pulpit early this morning, and I looked at the clock. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, uh, we're, we're going to, and uh, stay with us if you can. If you can't, well, then uh, uh, it'll be your loss because really uh, the title of the message is God's Greatest Promises, but we're not going to get to those until we get nearer to the end. So you got to stay for the whole thing if you really want the, uh, 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 the um, dessert this morning. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17 and 18, uh, uh, God says, come out from among them, and uh, well, wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be uh, sons, and my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Uh, and uh, I think I heard Almighty there in that song, didn't I, or something like that there, uh, uh, but anyway, hey, man, what a promise, uh, you know, uh, hey, if we're willing to come out from among them and be your separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, uh, then God is going to receive us, and not just receive us, but make us a part of the family. Uh, we're going to be sons and daughters of his, and uh, um, uh, when you think about it, you know, the God who's very, uh, uh, first of all, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the, the God who uh, created the universe so far beyond uh, the uh, earth, a uh, God who, uh, uh, who is so perfectly holy, um, um, is uh, willing to receive us uh, and uh, to make us a, a part of his family and um, uh, the, the God whose very nature is love uh, promises us who are often so unlovable uh, that uh, uh, we, can, we can just uh, grow in his love. And somebody says, how can it be? Uh, I, I love 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If you want to turn over there, I'm just going to quote it and then go on. But St. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, and or chapter 4, I believe it is, chapter seven, uh, verses 17 and 18. And, and 17 there, he says there, uh, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But the part I really like that next verse, uh, uh, because it tells us what the spirit is doing in us. He says, but we with unveiled faces. You remember when Moses came off the mountain back there, he had his faces veiled. His face glowed so much from being in the presence of the Lord that the people couldn't look upon him. And so he put a veil over his face. And Paul says, uh, and even today, concerning the Jewish people who uh, uh, will not accept Christ as their Messiah, uh, their still face is still uh, covered. In other words, they can't see the glory uh, of the Lord. Uh, then he said, but we with unveiled faces beholding as it is in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are uh, hereby uh, uh, changed uh, are, are hereby, let me see, how does that go there? Are uh, hereby transformed into this glory to glory. In other words, uh, God gives us a little glory and it will uh, stay close to him and, and separate it. He's just going to add to that glory, more glory, until ultimately we stand before him and see him uh, not as in a mirror, but we see him face to face there, uh, uh, see him, you know, glory to glory. Uh, there will behold his glory. Um, uh, and then he says, uh, uh, well, uh, the King James says even, but the New King James says just as just as by the Spirit of the Lord there. And uh, so the Holy Spirit uh, there, whom uh, is the Lord, is working in us to reveal to us 
Christ in such a way that uh, we'll just partake of his glory and more of his glory until ultimately John says in verse John, uh, uh, we don't know what we shall be like, but we know this, that when we see him, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And Daniel says, we're going to shine as a firmament forever and ever. Uh, uh, so my, uh, how can it be uh, uh, that uh, uh, God would receive us unto himself and, and work so gloriously to uh, bring us to that place to work? Uh, we will not only be created in his image and in his likeness, we will take on his image image and we will be like him there. Uh, let me say uh, it's certainly nothing that we have done that caused God to be so generous or so gracious, uh, so willing to love even us in our sins uh, or us who are sinners. You know, Romans uh, uh, 5, 8 there says there God commends, God proves his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, so we did nothing to deserve it, to earn it, or even to be worthy of it. Uh, on this, most of us, I think, will agree. And But we need to be careful that we don't take the truth of this statement beyond. In, in other words, uh, God has bestowed upon us his uh, unconditional love. Uh, he, he loved us unconditionally because he loved us enough to give his son to die for us. Jesus loved enough to give up his glory for us, uh, uh, to die for us uh, before we did anything while we were yet sinners. Uh, but um, as I said there, we need to be careful that we don't take the truth of this statement beyond its eternal truth. And you might say, well, Pastor, what are you saying? And well, I've told you for 29 and a half years, I've shared with you uh, uh, the fact that you don't ever take a text out of context. And notice the first word in that text up there is wherefore. Uh, wherefore means back up. Uh, see what it's there for. Uh, the reason that what he is saying is true because of what he has already said. Uh, and uh, uh, what has he already said? Uh, well, let's look at it. Uh, look back at verse 1 in chapter 6 there of 2 Corinthians. Uh, he says, we, who are we? Well, if he was to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, it would be Paul and Sothenus. Uh, but if you come to 2 Corinthians, it's Paul and Timothy. Uh, but notice what he said. Uh, we, uh, then, uh, me and Paul, or uh, me and Timothy, you might say, we uh, as workers together with him, who is him? Christ. Uh, and also plead with you. Who is you? Uh, well, you is uh, uh, in the initial uh, writing of the letter, you would be the church of Corinth. Uh, uh, those who, if you go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it would be those who are sanctified, uh, those who are uh, called saints. Uh, in other words, it would be the uh, children of God who has accepted uh Paul or has accepted uh, Christ as Savior and Lord of their life. So uh, when we put it all together, we then as workers together with Christ also plead with you. What is their plea? Notice, not to receive the grace of God in vain. What is Paul saying here? He will, uh, uh, as we said initially, uh, he is talking about uh, the partnership that he and Timothy uh, and all of his followers uh, have in working with Christ. Christ paid the price necessary to pay sin's debt for all mankind. Romans 3.23, all of sin. Romans 6.23, the wage of sin is death. Christ loved us enough. Christ has paid the price necessary to pay sin's debt for all mankind. Uh, but uh, the Apostle Paul, and Timothy uh, uh, has also paid a great price. Uh, uh, Paul will be uh, beheaded. Uh, Timothy uh, will be stoned to death or trampled to death uh, 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 there in Ephesus. Um, uh, and, um, but they have paid a great price in getting the gospel to these Corinthians that they might have opportunity to partake of a 
great salvation here. And if you look, I won't take time to return and read it, but if you look at uh, verses 3 through uh, uh, 10 there, you can see the price that Paul and Timothy has paid. We're familiar with the price that Jesus paid, but you'd see the price that Paul and Timothy uh, paid here uh, uh, in uh, uh, verses 3 through 10. Note Paul's main concern and purpose for writing this sixth chapter is to beseech the listeners, uh, the you, if you will, the church at Corinth, and then all believers who have opportunity to read the letter uh, that Paul is sending. Uh, and uh, what is it that Paul and is most concerned about? Notice he says that they, we beseech you that you be not uh to, uh, that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Let me say to you, that statement is totally unmerited. If it's not possible, as so many falsely teach, or mistakenly teach, I should say, Writing to the same church in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 and 2, Paul said, I declare unto you that gospel which I preached to you. We got to go, just go down to the third verse there and he tells us what that gospel was. The death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but he says, we, pre we declare unto you that gospel which we preached unto you, which also you received, wherein you stand. By which also you're saved. So uh, this, these that Paul is writing to, they're individuals who've been sanctified, who are called to be saints, uh, who have received the gospel, who's standing on the gospel, and who are saved if they keep in memory those things which I preached unto you, lest you have believed in vain. Twice he's going to use that term uh, once back here uh, uh, in um, uh, chapter 6 and again in First uh, Corinthians 15. Uh, and uh, uh, the word vain, unless you believed in vain, the word vain means empty, uh, uh, void, if you will. Uh, uh, it's kind of like, you know, the five foolish virgins there in Matthew 25. Uh, they had oil in their lamp, oil representing the Holy Spirit, but uh, they went to sleep uh, and uh, uh, they failed to make preparation for the bridegroom to come. And when the bridegroom come, uh, they were unprepared to meet him. It's kind of like uh, those that Jesus speaks of in Matthew chapter 7 in, in verse 21, uh, who comes to Jesus with, Lord, Lord, haven't we done? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, I never never knew you, you that work iniquity. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, if, if uh, it's impossible for one to uh, uh, lose their salvation or to be lost, uh, then there was no reason for Paul to write this statement twice to hear as he does to the Corinthians. Uh, and I'll drop down to verse 12. It is an interesting verse. The King James verse says it this way, you're not straightened in us, but you're straightening your own lust, or in your own bowels, I should say. Uh, uh, what is Paul talking about? What's this word straighten? What's this word bowels? Uh, well, bowels means affection uh, uh, in uh, the uh, uh, New Testament there in Greek. The word straighten means restricted. Uh, a matter of fact, in the New King James Version, it uses, instead of the word straighten, it uses the word restricted. You are not restricted by us, but you're restricted by your own affection. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of preachers today who won't preach the whole truth uh, uh, because uh, uh, they are accused of, or we're accused of, I should say, uh, when we preach that uh, there's something that uh, you need to do uh, to demonstrate the faith that you have. It's not that you need to do anything to get saved. It's that you're saved by grace through faith, but faith is an action word that requires uh, action. And James says that faith that doesn't do is a dead faith uh, uh, that uh, uh, leaves us 
empty or void, if you will. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, what Paul is saying here, hey, listen, what I'm preaching to you, don't restrict your growth, uh, which if you go down to the next couple of verses there, I believe it's verse 13 there, uh, he is talking about their enlargement, their growth. Paul is writing to them to enlarge them, to help them to grow. It isn't what I'm uh, preaching that is causing you or restricting you from growing, but it's your own lust uh, that is keeping you from growing up. And this brings us then to verse 14. Uh, here is the condition. You see, while God loves us with an unconditional love in the fact that he sent his son to die for us, in the fact that Jesus came and died for us, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, us uh, being accepted, being received, being saved, uh, entering in, if you will, uh, uh, there's some if, there's an if there. Be ye not unequally yoked together. This is a military term here. When I was in the military, uh, uh, I worked in the Combat Alert Center, swimming off aircraft. Right outside the Combat Alert Center, there was a lounge there. It was called the Officer's Lounge. Uh, it was where the pilots who were on alert lounged around uh, until they decided to uh, retire. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, what's the word there? The, uh, uh, <laughs> A while ago, but uh, anyway, the uh, uh, enlisted the enlisted men didn't go out and just sit down and lounge around with the officers. Uh, if I had a question, I could walk up and I could say, "Excuse me, sir," uh, uh, and I could ask the question. I, they answer the question and I walk away. Uh, the enlisted didn't uh, uh, just mingle with uh, uh, the officers, uh, or the officers didn't just mingle with the enlisted. Why not? Because uh, uh, the very uh, word there, uh, it, it means uh, to, uh, uh, it, it indicates there, keeping your own ranks. Keeping your own ranks. Uh, stay with your own group, if you will. Uh, and uh, uh, do not leave what Paul is saying here. Do not leave the Christian fellowship and join with unbelievers. It indicates that some of the Corinthians were joining with the heathens in idolatrous feast and other practices that would uh, lead to apostasy. I'll not take time to turn there, but if you want to uh, later, uh, uh, look at uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 3 through 13, or uh, chapter uh, 10, 16 through 33 here. We see where some of the Christians uh, were uh, mingling with the uh, 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 worshipers of the idol gods there, uh, uh, feasting with them, and so forth. Uh, so he says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with the unbeliever. Uh, uh, the questions here in verses 8 through 12, a, a series of them, uh, the answer to it is this. Righteousness cannot mix with lawlessness. Light cannot uh, have communion with darkness. Uh, Christ and Belial cannot be in one accord. And uh, you might say, what is Belial? Well, the word Belial actually means uh, worthlessness. Uh, here, uh, uh, it refers to Satan, but here only. Uh, in every reference in the Old Testament, it is used of evil men uh, being sons of Belial. Uh, in the same sense, uh, the New Testament speaks of them as uh, being uh, children of the wicked one. Uh, are of the devil, uh, such as Matthew uh, chapter 13, 38, or Acts chapter 13 uh, in verse 10, or First John chapter 3, uh, uh, verse 10. A believer cannot have part with an infidel, and there can be no agreement of the temple of God with idols. And three times Paul is going to say, ye are the temple of the living God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17, and chapter 6, 19 through 20, here in verse 16. If you will uh, compare uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, for, uh, 
As verse 16 here with Leviticus 26 and 12. If you will compare uh, uh, verse 17 with Isaiah uh, 52 verse 11, you will notice here that both of these are a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy uh, uh, wherein uh, uh, they prophesy concerning the fact that we are to be separated uh, uh, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, uh, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, uh, this is a, really the part that I wanted to preach, but before I preach it, before I go to verse 18, let's look at this word unclean and uh, what the Bible has to say about it. Uh, uh, since how we are to come out from the end and we're to be separate, saith the Lord, and we're not to touch the unclean thing. What is the unclean thing? Well, uh, if you look in um, uh, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 33, uh, Luke talks about it, but uh, of unclean foul our uh, spirit uh, here uh, uh, 24 out of 30 times I uh, use that word unclean as unclean food that uh, God has made clean uh, you remember in Acts uh, chapter 10 Peter's up on the housetop God has sent two men uh, from Cornelius to come and tell P or Peter did I say Paul uh, Peter's up on the housetop and, and uh, God has uh, had Cornelius send two men to uh, bring him to Cornelius that he might pre preach the gospel to the first Gentile there and uh, uh, so as uh, as uh, Peter is taking the gospel uh, to the uh, Gentiles there, and, and I said the first Gentile, this in a sense is the first time that the apostles have gone out to present the gospel to a Gentile. Now, Jesus presented the gospel to the Roman soldier, the centurion, and so forth. So, uh, uh, just make it uh, a plain there. But nonetheless, uh, Peter's up on the housetop there, and, and he's going to see a, a sheet coming down from heaven, uh, filled with things that the Jews were forbidden to eat. Uh, and uh, uh, he hears a voice saying, uh, Peter, uh, 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 you know, Kill and eat. And Peter says, Not so, Lord, for no unclean thing is entered into my mouth. Later, chapter 11, as he explained to James why he went into the house of this unclean, un, un, uh, uh, circumcised Gentile, Peter's going to quote that verse again uh, where he said, No unclean food thing is coming to my mouth. Uh, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 14, I have to admit, uh, this is a verse that's a little bit hard to understand, and I didn't take time really to uh, study it out, but it says there, you know, that the husband, talk about the unsaved husband, will be sanctified by the wife, the saved wife, uh, the uncircumcised, or the unsaved wife will be uh, sanctified by the saved husband, and he goes on to say, uh, or else the children are unclean. Uh, and uh, so I need to put some thought into really studying that. But just to share you, I, I, I where the word unclean is used. Um, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, he says, uh, For you know that no uh, fornicator shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh, neither unclean. Uh, if you go to Romans chapter 1 in verse 14 over there, he talks about the fact that uh, uh, the uh, uh, unclean, the, the, the fornicator, the, the uh, 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 homosexual, if you will, the venomous uh, uh, there uh, uh, is not going to uh, enter into the kingdom of heaven because of their fornication and, and with homosexuality, etc. Number five of the unclean things are here in St. Corinthians 6, 17. Uh, the demons, the moral, the physical, the uncleanness, uh, uh, all whatever it is that uh, would cause us to be unclean spiritually must be uh, uh, cleansed from body and spirit if one wants the fulfillment of the promises of 16 and 18. Now then let us go to verse 18. Uh, as I said, I titled the message this morning. I think I said it. If I didn't, uh, uh, the title of the message is God's Greatest Promises. Uh, and uh, uh, so let's consider uh, uh, 
Uh, we've talked about the wherefore because of certain things. Uh, if we have cleansed ourselves from them uh, uh, through our uh, surrendering or submitting our life to Christ, uh, uh, if we're willing to come out from the world and separate ourselves uh, from the world and from the unclean things, uh, uh, then uh, he says, uh, I will uh, receive you uh, and I will be a father to you. And, and you shall be sons to me. Here is the condition. And this is what I was talking about earlier. God loved us with an unconditional love. But as we come to him, we have got to be willing to meet certain conditions. I don't. You know, some of you may disagree with it, but if you do, you disagree with Paul and you'll disagree with Peter. Uh, or Peter will uh, say the same thing uh, uh, in, in Peter uh, as we will look at it in a moment. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, the condition here is that we separate ourselves from the above. The promise is that God will receive us and be a father unto us. We will be his sons and his daughters. A promise not from me. You know, sometimes I say something and to me it seems pretty scripturally sound and you disagree with me and that's all right because sometimes you will say something that seems scripturally sound to you and I would disagree with you and when we both get to heaven or each get to heaven, a uh, uh, our friend, uh, uh, we'll probably forget that it's even important, but if not, we'll find out who was right or who is wrong. Uh, uh, but here, thus saith the Almighty. Uh, here, there's no room for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, question as to whether or not God will receive us, whether or not we'll be sons and daughters of His. Uh, for thus saith the Almighty. Uh, and um, uh, why don't we say this is God's greatest promises? Let me give you seven of them real quickly. Uh, and I won't take it a moment with each one. But uh, I've heard, first of all, think of the honor of it. Uh, Hey, do you realize that we'll be prince and princesses, in the, that we are prince and princesses in the sense of the word? Hey, we who the world would consider a nobody? Hey, if I die today, 99.9.9.9% uh, 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 of the world's population couldn't care less, won't think a word about it, won't even know about it. But to God. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Uh, hey, we're going to take on His name. We're going to be a part of His family. Uh, uh, we are going to be heirs and joint heirs with Him, which is, uh, uh, our friend, one of the reasons. Secondly, uh, the eternal life is a promise that God has in places where there will be never another heartache. Think about it. Never another disappointment. Uh, not another tear. If we look in Revelation 21, 3 and 4, notice he says, and I heard a loud voice. I like that loud voice. God wants everybody to hear. Hey, listen. I'm going to dwell with you. I'm going to tabernacle with you. Notice, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye, and there shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away, and Lois and Mona said, Amen. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, uh, a third reason is the inheritance. Uh, Romans 8, 16 and 8, most of you can, uh, can quote it. Uh, that spirit that we talked about a while ago, that spirit who is working in us, giving us liberty. Uh, uh, we're not bound, a friend, uh, by the world. Uh, uh, we're being uh, formed from a glory glory to glory into the very image of Christ, uh, that spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are the sons of God, are the children of God, and if children, then we're heirs with God, we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together with him. Uh, I think of it, we're going to take on that glory. 
uh, that Daniel spoke of there in Daniel 12. Uh, uh, number four, the eternal fellowship. And Ephesians 2, 6 and 7 says uh, there that he saved us by grace. Uh, and now that he's raised us up together to sit with him in heavenly places, uh, uh, that in the ages to come, he might show to us the exceeding riches of his Grace, uh, think about that, my friend. For eternity, we're going to be able to enter into His very presence, uh, look up on His face, uh, no veil uh, before Him. Uh, my friend, we're going to be able to see Him as He is, uh, and we're going to be able to sit down, uh, and He's going to uh, show to us all of the riches uh, of His glory. Imagine that. Amen. Number five, the divine nature. Uh, Second Peter, notice Second Peter one and four, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Imagine not another impure thought, no anger, no lustful pride. Not a single frailty that we have down here that sometimes uh, embarrasses us, uh, even if nobody else in the world knows about it. Uh, uh, that uh, thought that we have that uh, we're so glad uh, it never makes the front page uh, of the newspaper. Amen. Uh, hey, none of that. Uh, uh, there, we're going to take on that totally uh, impure or that totally pure nature of God himself. Amen. Number six, an entrance into the sea. Revelation 2.14 says, Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. Even Adam blew it. But my friend, when we get there, oh, we will not have an opportunity to blow it because uh, there will be no tree of knowledge there, uh, just the tree of life. Uh, and uh, we will be able not only to partake of it, uh, but we'll be able to enter in uh, through the gate into the city, he says there. And finally, we'll inherit all things. Revelation 21 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son, and if I might add, and daughters. Because he's already said sons and daughters early. So I'm not adding to the word, uh, just to this phrase here. Uh, in closing, see when we title the message, God's greatest promise. The most wonderful thing is that the promises are made to everyone who is willing to meet the condition. You might ask, what are the conditions? Simply, I would accept Jesus Christ by faith through genuine repentance. Live in an abiding live out in a in abiding faith so that uh, our friend uh, our faith is illuminated uh, so that God and all can see and know hey here's one who has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ I called Travis this morning uh, I'm sure when the phone rang and he saw his man oh no not again uh, uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, I told him we are not made Sunday school, but we will be there for church. Can I say that, brother? Yeah, amen. When I turned around and walked away, I said, boy, that's a statement of faith. <laughs> Lois is laying in there uh, 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 hurting, her head is splitting, and, and she's feeling weak and faint. Uh, and uh, uh, I went back in there, and she said, I'm hurting so bad. I said, that's okay, sweetheart. God is going to touch you. Amen. And God is going to raise you up. He wants you to be in his house this morning. He's given me a message to preach this morning. He wants preached. Uh, and uh, I went back into the living room and uh, uh, back into the kitchen and uh, uh, kind of washed the dishes and then went to my office. And then from the office, I thought, well, I'll check on her, see how she's doing. I got back there. She's already dressed and ready to go and wanted to know 
uh, how come I'm not dressed and ready to go? Uh, well, uh, it wasn't a matter of the fact that I didn't know where he's going. It's the fact that it doesn't take me but 10 minutes to get ready. Once I get it all together, which I do on Saturday night, uh, and it's just a matter of just jumping into him. Uh, I praise God. Uh, listen, uh, uh, the condition is that we genuinely repent of our sins. Then that we live out that which we promised at the altar. Remember when you came to the altar and you told the Lord that you wanted Him to forgive you of your sins uh, and you said you accept Him as Savior and Lord of your life? Live it out. Live out that faith which endures unto the end. He says there in Revelation 22, all those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. My friend, this is not something we start and stop. It's not something that we live a while and lay down. It's a, something that we live out here, knowing what is awaiting us there uh, that makes it uh, uh, impossible for us to give up, impossible to quit. How can I give up? The seven things uh, that's awaiting me uh, over there. Uh, Fathers, we come to you this morning. Lord, we just love you. God, you blessed us and given us the message. I hope that we have blessed someone here. I, I pray that someone listening over the YouTube later, Father, will uh, hear it and, and Lord, will examine their life and Father, will surrender to you and Lord, just... Uh, then begin a life of pursuit of the seven things here. The greatest promises, Father, God, that you've given us. Uh, how we thank you and praise you, Father. Uh, Lord God, uh, how we thank you for Jesus who made it all possible, Father. How we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that's working in us. Uh, God, bringing us from glory to glory until we take on that very image of the Lord Jesus himself. Just bless and have your way, we pray this morning in Jesus' wonderful name. Let's stand.